The Attorney General appears to be waging a media campaign on behalf of President Trump, the very subject of the investigation at the heart of the Mueller report. Rather than letting the facts of the report speak for themselves, the Attorney General has taken unprecedented steps to spin Mueller's nearly two-year investigation. One, he summarized the report and cherry-picked findings in his March 24th letter to Congress. Two, he withheld summaries written by the special counsel that were intended for public consumption. Three, he has briefed the White House on the report before providing Congress a copy, which has helped them prepare a rebuttal response for the President. And now, the evening before the report's scheduled release, the Department of Justice has informed the committee that it will receive a copy between 11 a.m. and noon, well after the Attorney General's 9.30 a.m. press conference. This is wrong. It is contrary to the Attorney General's own words to the committee. Quote, I do not believe it would be in the public's interest for me to attempt to summarize the full report or to release it in serial or piecemeal fashion. Close quote. It now appears the Attorney General intends to once again put his own spin on the investigative work completed by the special counsel and his team. The fact that the Attorney General is not releasing even the redacted report to Congress until after his press conference will again result in the report being presented through his own words rather than through the words of Special Counsel Mueller. The central concern here is that the Attorney General Barr is not allowing the facts of the Mueller report to speak for themselves, but is trying to bake in the narrative about the report to the benefit of the White House. And of course, he's doing this just before the holiday weekend, so it's extraordinarily difficult for anybody to react. This is wrong. It is not the proper role of the Attorney General. I should add one other thing. The Department of Justice, in a court filing in the Roger Stone case today, said that some members of Congress may get access to some of the redacted information only for use in secret. The Judiciary Committee has no knowledge of this, and this should not be read as any agreement or knowledge or, um, um, or, or, or assent on our part. Thank you very much. Oh, we'll questions. take a couple of questions. Couple That's right. Uh, you, I, I have a question. Do you, are you satisfied with the DOJ saying that there will be two versions, one with fewer re redactions for a limited number of members of Congress? We are certainly not uh, satisfied with that. We've repeatedly said what is demanded by the situation, and that is that the Judiciary Committee be given the entire report and the underlying evidence uh, so that we can make those judgments for ourselves. And the Judiciary Committee can, as has been the case in prior situations, decide which limited portions of the report might have to be kept secret so as not to reveal sources and methods of intelligence or for some other legitimate reason. But that's a decision for the Committee to make not for the Attorney General or the Administration. Linda, yes. We'll take one more question. Uh, Congressman, when do you plan to issue subpoenas for Mueller or anyone else for that matter? Well, we'll have to take the time over the next couple of days to carefully read the redacted report so that we, so that we, we don't find out that, in fact, it, there's very little left out. But on the assumption that it's heavily redacted, we will most certainly uh, issue the uh, uh, subpoenas in very short order. Thank you very much, everybody. I'll answer that. We probably, I assume we'll probably find it uh, useful to ask Mueller to testify, and I assume we may ask uh, members of, of, of his team to testify. But we'll have to make those decisions after reading what we get, as, as inadequate as that may be. Thank, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Was Congressman Gerald Nadler, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, laying out his problems what, with what has transpired since Robert Mueller's team finished their report and the problems he has with the way it's being rolled out uh, tomorrow, accusing the attorney general of essentially cooking the process to favor the president. Back now uh, with the team. Uh, Mike Shields raised the, the notion, will it ever be enough for Democrats, even if they get a less redacted version, uh, the, the leadership get a less redacted version? Uh, there are Democrats who want the original underlying documents for the investigation. 
Well, I think I don't think there's anything wrong with them wanting to have those underlying documents and trying to get them. But I, I do think the sort of talking point of Democrats will never be happy. It's not I don't I don't really think it's that accurate because the Democrats are asking for something pretty basic, which is to just get the report ahead of time and have time to read it and for it to be unredacted, at least for a certain number of people who can be trusted with it. That, that's a pretty reasonable thing to do. And I'll just go back to when you want people to understand what you're talking about, it, you embargo it. That is a, you can take any PR person off the street and ask them how you do that, and they will tell you that you give people time to read it, process it, ask informed questions. You don't come out and start talking about something that people don't have time to think about. Um, you don't, and if you really want accountability, you share it with the people who are supposed to be helping hold the White House accountable, Congress. I think it's just basic. Right, Mike, what I don't understand is if the president has said this report fully exonerates him, he's been completely exonerated on collusion, uh, completely exonerated on, on obstruction. If, in fact, that is the case, and he really believes that, uh, although we know some of a little bit of one line of, or not even a complete line of what Mueller said, that doesn't seem to support the notion of exoneration on, on, uh, on, on obstruction of justice, isn't the attorney general acting as if there is something to hide? I mean, well, if you are the attorney general and, and this exonerates the president and the president says, you know, you know, nothing to hide here, no problem here, why would you go about this from pretty much every step the way the attorney general has? I mean, he yeah. essentially, he writes a, a four, sorry, he writes a four, okay. page, just a review, he writes a four page summary um, that is, clearly favorable to the president, could have quoted the Mueller report more, but he chose to write this four-page summary the way he did. There's complaints from the Mueller team about some of the emphasis he put on it, kind of the uh, the, the the twist he gave to it. Uh, then takes weeks while the president is out there speaking about how he, this is completely exonerated. The White House clearly has a message on this. Uh, you know, three weeks go by, and now he wants to give a press conference before it's even released so that he can continue whatever narrative he wants to give, assuming that's uh, one of the things he plans to do, uh, and then a redacted report is released. Does that sound like somebody who's... Yeah, I mean, look, I, 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 I said to you many times that the president should not shut down the Mueller investigation when that was a <coughs> thing that kept getting rumored over and over again and never, ever happened, because he should want the truth to come out. I think as much of this that can legally be made possible should be made public. I mean, you redact things for legal reasons. If they, I'm sure Democrats will go to a judge and try and get the things that unredacted that they can, and they should follow that process as much publicity and transparency. To get it? Because I you mean. legally have to. It's Department of Justice standard operating procedure under legal guidelines to not. I mean, Jeffrey but can explain this better than I can as to why no, you no, have it to redact have to certain be things. Redacted in the first, but the point is, if it can be re revealed to certain members of Congress in the first place, why make them jump through the hoops of going to a well, judge? Well, that's my point. Is that I they, they, they may do they may unredact as much as they can, and then there's a, a question about what you unredact after that. But to get to get to the to the question, mm -hmm. look at look at the circus that we're watching. Gerald Nadler just had a press conference where he's saying the attorney general is going to spin at his press conference, so I'm going to come out and have my own press conference where I only take three questions, and I'm going to pre-spin and say, how dare he treat this process this way? Well, do you and blame him? Do you blame him? Of course I do. Why? Because it's a circus. It's a political but, but, circus well, from the beginning. But wait a minute. Gerald Nadler has no idea what the attorney general... All the attorney general tomorrow may say is, at 11 o'clock, this thing's coming out. Here's the process we went through. Here's Rod Rosenstein. Here's what's and going on. And he could be changing that at this, at this very but, but moment. But it's not as if this is in a vacuum. I mean, the attorney general has testified in front of Congress, and many of the things he said uh, certainly alarmed Democratic members of Congress in terms of the way his truthfulness, the way he was... Uh, characterizing spying, things like that. And I'm sure that will be that will be something that they look at uh, throughout this entire process, and the Democrats will go crazy on Capitol Hill, and they'll keep investigating, they'll keep at issuing subpoenas, and that's what it'll fall into. You know, the, and I, well, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. No, no, but just, if the world is full of intractable problems. This was one with a solution. You know, this report was handed over to the Department of Justice on, I believe, March 4th. Yeah. Just release the thing. That's right. And then everybody doesn't have to have press conferences pre you know, pre-judging or post-judging. Well, I mean, it, it's it's a very important subject. It, it, it's of interest to a great number of people. The Mueller people wrote this report in order to inform people what happened. Release the report so we can talk about the substance and, and instead by the of way, this ridiculous procedural, you know, process nonsense. The House voted unanimously, might I remind you, to release everything in the report, and they don't vote unanimously on anything. The president was out there saying 
after after the uh, Barr's summary letter, which he doesn't like to call a summary, after that letter said, let it all out there. Here's the thing. Nadler, 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 Nadler used, used some very interesting... It doesn't matter what they to not get out. It will get out. Yeah, Nadler he, used some very interesting language there. He, he referred to the summaries intended for public consumption by the special prosecutor. I'm going to assume uh, that that was not said accidentally, that that presumes some knowledge perhaps, that they've talked to people around speculating here, around Mueller and the investigation, that indeed it was intended that those summaries but be we, released. Okay, okay. We, don't, and, we don't know. No, we don't. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying it interests me that Nadler used, used that language.